All right, for my latest project, I'm gonna try to get this into there. And hopefully then I'll be able to control my trailer brakes. So to start off, I've gotta take off these right here and pull that trim panel down. Okay, so I removed those two seven millimeter hex head screws with my ratchet. I applied the parking brake and I put it in first gear um, and I lowered the steering wheel all the way to make room for this. And then what I'm gonna do here, I'm just gonna grab these two holes here with my fingers and just pull the horn, uh, I'll blow the horn also. And I'm just gonna uh, pull this out of here. It's got little things there, little tabs. You just pull it out and you pull that out there. And this pulls out right here. And then that's the first bit done Next right there. Next step is I've got to remove this piece of trim right here so I can access where the brake controller goes. So I'm just gonna grab this here and I'm just gonna pull on it. Apparently it's got these non-destructive clips that just hold it into place. It might help if I put that back into park. There we go. And it's got... The reason for this harness is you've got some vehicles with four-wheel drive, and this is where their four-wheel drive controller goes, their selector knob. But of course, we don't have that, so they just plug the harness into the back of the coin slot, which is just, you know, no actual connectors. And now, our fake selector knob is disconnected and our trim's off. The next thing we're gonna do is remove this tray here, which is pretty simply done again, seven millimeter hex head screws. We're just removing it with the ratchet. Now this is our trailer brake controller harness, and it was just electric taped up here next to the ODB2 port. And what we gotta do is we've gotta feed this up the back into this cavity right here. All right, so we got the harness fed through here. It was actually also clipped to the frame right back there, so I had to cut that clip. Uh, but the harness is coming out of the cubby now, so the first thing we need to do is we need to remove the cap off of the harness. It just protects it from dust and electrical contacts. And then we're just going to plug this into that, which is also a two-handed job. All right, now our brake controller is hooked up. So what we're gonna do, we're going to just stick it right back in this cubby where the storage tray used to be. I'm making sure to get this wire harness out of the way. It's a little easier done with two hands than with one, but you know, we'll make do. There we go. Make sure it slides into those little plastic things right there. And then it's just a matter of screwing these back in. One final physical step is we have to collect connect the fuses that are necessary to power the trailer brakes and ta trailer auxiliary circuits. All right, so this big guy right here is supposed to go in slot nine right there. And then this little guy belongs in slot 21 right there. So now we should be good to go. All right, so now that that is secured, you might think, okay, we're done trying to put the trim on and tow a trailer. But while it's installed, it is not enabled in hardware yet. So the next step that a lot of people do is they take their car to the dealer and say, hey dealer, enable this for me, but I didn't wanna to have to bother with that and pay them. So I've got this OBD2 to USB adapter here, and I've got four scan running on uh, Windows Parallels, uh, Windows Virtual Machine on Parallels on my Mac. So I'm gonna connect to the vehicle. First, I gotta make sure the ignition is turned on. 
and I, this is important, I gotta make sure the vehicle is not moving. Okay, looks like we are not moving. So, I'm gonna press okay. All right, connection to the vehicle has been established. All right, please select specification for this vehicle. 2012 my because it's a 2012 f-150 identify the type already installed this is an am fm radio with cd not a navigation system all right so it has asked me if i would like to save the profile information for this vehicle yes so when it was finished uh connecting to my vehicle um, there's the log of everything that it came across. And you'll actually see right here, it found the trailer brake controller module, but there was an exception in it. That exception is there because the trailer brake controller module was not enabled. So we're going to go into here, into our configuration page right here, and we're going to click, we're going to double click on IPC module configuration, not as built. And we're going to click the play. All right, so that's gonna load up our module configuration here. All right, and then we're gonna scroll down to the trailer brake controller gain setting. Now you'll see it's disabled. So we're gonna enable this. And we're gonna click the check mark. And then we're gonna write this to our vehicle. Please cycle the ignition off and then back on. All right, so we're gonna do that. And we're gonna turn it back on and click okay there. All right, so now that the configuration was successful and the ignition has been turned off and back on, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna adjust my trailer brake gain. And you'll see the buttons are working now. So that means that our trailer brake controller is working. Now I'm gonna test it with our tester. All right, so I have my tester here. Just plugs into the trailer harness like a regular old trailer. There we go. It's got this nice long cable that goes up here to the driver's seat for me. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna crank the vehicle up and wait on my tester. Okay, so ECU detected, ground integrity is good, and we have 12 volt auxiliary power, that's good. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to try our left turn yep and our right turn yep all right now we're going to turn on our headlamps and we've got running lights we'll turn those back off all right now we're going to try our manual brake applicator right here and we've got Output there is 7.5, and then here we're at seven. All right, so I'm gonna turn the gain up. I'm gonna turn the gain up to 10. And then I'm gonna try this again. And we go almost all the way to 10 on here. And that's as high as the gain goes. All right, and then I'll turn my gain back down to, uh, no, we'll go with five is a good setting to start with. I'll try my manual applicator again, and we get five. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try depressing the brake. Come on. Well, we see we got our brake lights. We might not actually get brakes if the vehicle's not moving. I'll put it in reverse or drive. There we go. There we go, with it in drive, we have brake output when I'm pressing the brake. 
course, I'm not going to let off the brake because then I would start moving. But now I can let off the brake. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. So we're good. It is installed and running, and now I can put the trim back on. Okay, after making sure that my um, harness is plugged back in to the dummy coin change adapter, I'm just going to snap, snap this back into place. And then, let's see, I'm going to door so that's not loud put that back in first so that I can snap this back into place more easily there we go Okay, and then I just got to put those screws back in and I'm done.